Hey, hello everyone. Today I will be working on the Sony TA-FA7ES. All right, that's the heavy guy. I'm glad that I'm visiting gym in swimming pool. I guess it helps really. It's about like 60 pounds, maybe more. So this guy had an issue and like additionally, it was dropped during shipping from Japan, so we will be replacing the holder for the capacitors, the large ones. And we need to find an issue and see why it don't work. It uh, looks like it's permanently in the protection mode, right? So let me open, let me see and I can fix obvious things and then we will start working and see like power supplies both channels like preamp pump and so on season all right here i'm opening the amplifier and unpacked the part replacement part which will was supplied with it and here you may see that's the transistors mosfet golden plated legs right so that's the first really really good model they released after they discontinued 555 series okay that works good that's the mechanics of it and next was so it's a phase seven next was a phase 70 and last one in this series was f fr fa triple seven okay it's the one i have all right let me install the holder because this board well i need to remove bottom part and see what's what, what's going on there it's fully disconnected okay see you soon all right all right so that's i removed the bottom cover and it required me to remove these feeds i can every feed like half a pound <laughs> and you see all right so what i mentioned is that this connector is disconnected so probably that's the reason why it didn't work plus all wires has been pinched by these pins right let me see so next i have to install and fix this properly because the board and capacitors holds only with this plastic frame and it's it's quite flimsy to hold this mass i'm not sure why they did this way i saw the board needs to be like screwed but it's I don't see any screws for that. All right, let me install and let's start from there. Let's go one by one. All right, so this frame don't get easily below those capacitors because it has these pins which supporting capacitors. And those capacitors are fixed with the screws and I mentioned that one screw is missing. Really? How is ever possible? All right, let me work on it. And before I even touch them, I measure the voltage. And top one, which is connected, is fully discharged. But the lower one still has four volts. It's better than 50, but still, let me see if I can get with one hand, but still not fully safe, all right, so. That's where I would need to discharge this capacitor. Right, not so easy with one hand. Sorry guys, need to get into both. Yeah, come on. Yeah, see, five volts. All right, considering the capacitance of these guys, this may be a big bar. <laughs> Yeah. All right, I'm installing the frame, all right, but it's super strange for me design solution. You see board, 
is holds only with the screws to capacitors, right? And capacitors are just sit on these uh, pins here and here. And we also have to somehow screw it in between these capacitors because board is connected with the wires. Oh my, that would not be simple. And I don't want to remove transformer, so I have to think how to avoid it. But it's it's kind of flimsy. All this design, like it's as soon as it drops, that would not hold the weight. The capacitors, they're huge, 15,000 microfarad. They're not that heavy as it's sold. It's kind of maybe three quarter of a pound, something like that each. Right now, let me install back, uh, put the cable in, and I want to have conversation with the owner before I will turn it on <laughs> because I need to know why connector disconnected and where is missing screw. See, ya. all right, all right, installed. It holds, like I hope. Well, I use it this way uh, to tie up the screw and this screw is the only thing which it holds everything together as soon as it it's get broke like it will be flimsy and as soon as this legs broke everything just fall out and start shorten up all right now let me check all fuses and let's try to turn it on and see power supply voltages. All right, all right. First power on, nothing blow up. I hear a release. Okay. So control circuit working, muting, source direct work. All right, speakers on. Blast, treble, balance, okay. Have source direct. Oh, yeah. Green light. As you may see. Now, next, what I do, I will test power supply. I will test outputs. And then like, uh, I will test if it's uh, work. I will con connect oscilloscope to see if it's work from the external generator and let's start from there see you soon okay first step done power supply checked and i connected aux and preamp and i'm adjusting volume and preamp works you may see levels so how many volt do one volt so see peak to peak to point sixty four so preamp works that's picking see all right so preamp gives two volts that's that's cool next I will use a C voltmeter to check if it gives something on speakers so far speakers looks to be connected because there was like pretty minor like 50 millivolts offset all right i need two hands to do it let me do it and i tell you results all right good news i just tested with ac voltmeter and i observed it 15 volts up to 15 volts ac i didn't turn fully but on each channel i observed it uh, wave all right now let me try to connect speaker and hear if it will play any sound all right all right i connected speakers these two from gvc mini system and we have 400 gears and left right and both I consider it as working. <laughs> now let's me connect DAC to the input and let's try some music. 
All right, all right. DAC is connected, speakers connected. I t tested the bias currents, everything is fine. Now I will run for a short time music so you can hear. And that would be it for this video. I will be closing it and giving back. All right, let's try a different song. That's, I pretty much like it. It's a flight of the cosmic hippo. <laughs> pretty interesting song. Let's get to my Kibas library. Let's try this one. Sorry, I cannot play longer because YouTube just will ban it. Let's try George Duke as this one. I pretty much like it from dusk till dawn. Very good sound, now what I like, so what Sony did, you see there's just two MOSFET transistors on the output, on each channel, one P-type, one N-type, all right? And those are 100 watts at 8 ohm amplifiers. So depending on the voltage, maybe like uh, Japan claim 90, for United States they claim 100, uh, but all in all, like, Power is well enough. I never run more than 30% on the volume on this amp. Uh, specifically that it's produced a pretty clear and linear sound. What I mentioned, this week I've been uh, visiting a big presentation in our audiophile store of uh, new speakers. Uh, it was... Uh, Bowers and Wilkins 801 D4 AB Road Edition. So they released 100 speakers in like uh, 60 years. I believe it's, it was eight, 60 years memory of uh, first time when speakers has been presented at uh, Abbey Road's uh, recording studio. And uh, they tell an interesting story. I will post it in this video at the end, so you can hear yourself. And this was pretty cool demo. So what I want to say, like, uh, they've been playing the speakers using Marantz uh, 10, the latest D-class amplifier from Marantz, which costs uh, 15,000, um, one amp, right? And they play two, one for right channel, one for left channel, so they use it as monoblocks and they use it as a um, Marantz uh, streamer, which uh, costs $14,000. And play it on the speakers. The sound was beautiful. Stage deep and wide, like like pretty hard to, to like compare with anything. Like you sit in studio and listen to this artist, all right? And then I went back home, I ran my Rotel amp, you know, I have Rotel. Uh, it was very different. And then I ran my Sony 777 amp on my speakers, while on the Wilkins. And that's where like, I get the sonically the same sound. I definitely cannot get the same stage out of my, my speakers, but uh, resolution and sonically they were like resembling the bar in Wilkins famous sound. All right, that's where like uh, the Sony amps, they are pretty cool and produce a really, really good sound. All right, so hope you enjoyed my videos. So today we've been with Sony FA7ES, really beautiful amp. And I want, we have still like much more Amps, a bigger choice today. I'm so regret Sony stopped producing stereo equipment. They produce now only 
home theater equipment. So last look inside, power up left channel, right channel. Uh, I believe standby power supply. I'm not sure about this board. Here we have preamp and this board is like inputs and relay switches. So like when we switch, we hear relay clicking, all right? And interesting like uh, selector for the source mode, what source will be playing on the record outputs. It has a plastic cable here, wire, which goes to the last board. And they have a long switch there, which this cable is moving back and forth on the board all right i will probably also do clean up for these connectors i have a um, dremel tool and i use like a polishing uh big circle and just like run it around and they start shining like new all right all right see you in my video all right guys that's how it looks like before cleaning okay let me clean it a little bit. Well, well, that's after some polishing and cleaning. I wasn't able to fully make this shiny, but I did my best. So all connectors are clean it and can be used properly. See ya. All right, all right. Last look on assembled amplifier. A little scratched knobs here, but all in all, it's still in a pretty decent shape. All right, please. Good, happy. Happy when we achieve good results. Thank you, see you, and bye-bye. Uh, go to company for, I think it's going on 34 years now, mm -hmm. but 33 or 34. Uh, Eric McBride, how many years? 25. 25. Michelle, how many years? Uh, it'll be 24 July 29th or 30th. Yeah. This so, month, so. so individually, none of us have the longevity that Bowers has, but collectively, we, we got we got it beat. So Bowers is going to celebrate their 60th anniversary uh, next year, um, and we are super super proud to kick off uh, this. Well, I guess it's a world tour, or a North American tour of uh, the Abbey Road uh, Signature Editions, and powered by Morantz. Um, so we're going to take you guys through uh, a couple of tracks. We're going to introduce Abbey Road to you. We're going to introduce Bowers to you. We'll introduce Morantz to you. Um, 